And we are, we're live. This is so cool. Dude, what's yeah, even cool? Yeah. Look at you. Look at yeehaw. you. I like your hat. It's, it's like a halo. Oh, thanks. Yeah, yeehaw. I'm a cowgirl. I like that hat. Yeah. It's, like, it's like a halo. It's like the holy divine moment where, you know, see, you see those paintings of like, you know, people back in like this 1800s, 1700s, where they like, like a halo. <laughs> That's what happens when, when you're a mother of two beautiful girls and, and, and you live a healthy life. You know, like, I, I just don't know how to do my hair, quite honestly. And so I had Justin do braids to my hair today. And I put a hat on because I was like, I don't know how to do my own hair. So this is going to have to work. So Wait, you had Justin do braids? Justin did my braids. He did my braids. He's really good at braiding. And did so really good job. he did. Yeah, I don't know how to do this. So I'm, you know, I'm a lucky girl. How are you guys doing? <laughs> good. I'm good. good. Everybody's. I was saying this before, but, but I, I want to tell everyone because I am like a grandma, like nothing against grandmas, but I don't know how to use a lot of social media things. I'm not very like tech savvy. It's like really hard for me to figure this stuff out. This was so easy. So congrats to you guys Thank you. because Billboard, Thank you. this is awesome. This is like, yeah. this has made things really easy. Thank you. Thank very you. Much. you know, I, I think, I think the whole thing was, you know, Bright and I have spent so long on social media professionally from being on YR and, 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 and acting that we've always said to ourselves, what's missing? What, what could be easier? What could be simpler? How can we put all our social media and websites into one place? How can you find fans and people in the same things as you? Like you can go on and use hashtags. Who's got, is that you, Brighton? Who's got the, you got the feedback? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. Okay. No, no, it's bright. It's bright. He always gets feedback. I, I don't know why. I think it's like a, it's, it's like a music exec thing. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> it's like you know, how do you find fans who are you know Y and R fans or or GH fans or Dual fans? And find all. There's no way you can match hashtags and find people who follow all those hashtags. So that's what we do. We let you add up to 50 hashtags, and it'll find out all the people who follow those, and we'll present them to you. So that's what we wanted to do, and we did it, and. It's great. We have a new release coming out in a couple of weeks. It's we'll talk about that later. But I want to hear about you. I missed you. I missed you. I haven't seen you since. I missed Dude. you. It's so good to see you. I get to see Brighton still, but I like his face. And whenever I see him, I like grab him and give him a big hug. But I, everyone misses you. We love you. I, thank you. I know I miss everybody too. I do. It's uh. But you're you know, doing big things. Like look at you. Like this is like you're doing big, big stuff. So I'm I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for everything you have going on. That means a lot. You know, it does, especially from you, because like it's funny, like you and I we've done prices right together for so long. We presented at the Emmys last year, and it's like, you know, I all of a sudden I had like this this connection I had with everybody just gone. And like to see you and just see you and your family grow. I mean, you have such a beautiful family. I'm such a fan of, of your family. You have oh, such thanks. a you have such have a great husband. Have, have I do have a really they're good here. Look, yeah. this is you want to say hi? Hey, hey, hey. hey sweetheart. I, I have my ear pods in so she can't hear you, but she oh, okay. um Olivia broke her arm, and so today no. she was very brave. We um she had another whoa, she whoa. had another like <laughs> She had a follow-up appointment um, today, and her arm is healing perfectly. So, I'm so she is, glad. like, so Good. brave. What was she um, doing? How did she break it? I wish that we could tell people you should see the other guy because, you know, we don't. there should be, like, some crazy story. <laughs> but it was, like, one of those falls where you would, like, never <laughs> – you would, like, never, ever think that – you know, like as a parent, like you hear them cry or they fall or you watch them fall and you're like, I don't even want to look at that one. That's going to be really yeah. bad. This was like yeah. not one of those situations. She like tripped over a step. She was holding an Elsa doll and just fell on her elbow the wrong way. And I, Justin was like, I, you just never in a million years would have thought that a fall like that would have broken her elbow. But unfortunately it did. She hit it just like the wrong spot, I guess. And um, well, she's been such a trooper. She had to get two pins put in her elbow, but she was doing awesome. So kids are resilient, you know? Uh, yeah. yeah. Right now, it, it, it's, I, I'm just glad, like, as someone who's broken their elbow twice, and, the, like, oh there's my, my elbow scar for my second break, Look, and there's Daniel, my one for my first. broke his elbow, too. Look. Uh, yeah. Wow. And, sweetheart, you are, she's so brave. You're so she's brave. So, so brave. <laughs> Uh, she's so brave, and and they're, they're saying how brave you are. 
You're so right. Oh, yeah. oh she wants to share <laughs> one? Oh my God, that's so good. <laughs> We're in for it. A little actress right here. Um, so, so where I oh do hey do you want do you want them? Would you be okay with that if if oh my gosh she's so cute. Would you be okay with that if they wanted to act or? It's weird because it was something like I always remember only wanting to be an actress. Like that's all I ever wanted to do with my life. So if, if it's something right. that she actually was like yes I really want to be an actress and it's something that she I felt like she was ready to do and she could she said that oh this is something that I want to pursue. I would. Right. I mean, if it's her dream, like, absolutely. I'll do whatever I can to help her with her dreams. I mean, I don't think anyone wishes acting yeah. like upon their children, but if that's, <laughs> if that's something that yeah. she was born to do and that's her, that's what she wants. Absolutely. I'll support her 100%. But yeah, I don't think anyone's like, yeah, I want my kid to be an actress because especially as an actor, because you know how hard it is. You know, well, you know that, it's like, that it's not about how good you are. There's so many, like I've always said to my kids, if you want to do anything in life where you want to depend upon your talent and your hard work, become a golfer or a tennis player. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, it's it's how much dedication you put into it, how hard you train, and if you win, no one can take it from you. But like yeah. you know this, but like you've done so many movies. Like I remember when I first met him, like, but I know her. Oh, it's from this, oh, it's from that. And then I watch a movie like Ted. Or seventeen again comes on. Look at this, Melissa. <laughs> you know, and it's like your own experience of, of being an actress, and you know, you go in, you you, you match the breakdown for the character perfectly. You do a great read, and then they'll they'll give it to someone else, and you're kind of like, why? Then you find out it was a friend of the director, or they knew the so and so, or there's something going on, and it's heartbreaking. It's so out of your control too, because sometimes it's just like a quality that someone has about them that when they walk in the room and the casting director or the producers, the writers, like that's the person. And it might not even be what was written originally, but it was something that that right. person, it's like, it's like an, an, un, like an intangible thing that, that someone might right. have that you're like, Oh, that's like, that's what I was looking for. But yeah, you know, it's just, it's hard. It's just a hard bu business to get into. Uh, luckily I've, all of us have been very lucky to have had, success in it you know like i mean i i have to tell you i was watching family matters the other day it was on as i was getting ready for work and i was like oh my gosh it's right i've been right my whole life like i mean i i grew up watching that show and it's do crazy. the kids watch it now um you, you know they haven't really they're still into like paw patrol and like shows oh, yeah. like that with cartoons like it, they, they really oh. haven't gotten into like they like you know what they actually really do like that's live action sort of things is they, they love like watching plays like watching like live like videos like youtube videos of like shrek the musical or like spongebob mm -hmm. squarepants the musical mm -hmm. like they love musicals which mm -hmm. we saw frozen on broadway and i think that that kind of gave them a love for for theater so i'm interested to see what's going to happen with that but um you got to yeah. check out the uh, you got to check out the eighth uh, episode of the eighth season on Family Matters, and you can see me and Crystal when we're kids. Really? Okay, I'm gonna look for that. Yeah. <laughs> so that that oh, leads okay. me to my question, which is, if you want, if they were going to be actresses, would you want them to do theater or film or TV, or you don't mind, or whatever makes them happy? Whatever they want to do, you know. Um, I did theater in high school, um, which I loved, but. If, if that's what they, yeah, I'm just, I'm just like, so my parents were so supportive of me and what I wanted to do. They were kind of like, I mean, my, my mom like had no idea and he like had nothing, like she was so like kind of had no idea what the acting world was or like what it looked like. And my dad didn't really either, but my dad, I feel like was maybe he missed his calling of being an actor. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I so like you got it from like, you got it from your dad. I met your dad, and his dad's pretty cool. He's very personal. He's got a great personality. Yeah, yeah. Like, and he he loves like going to set. He loves like watching like behind the scenes. Like, you know, he loves that stuff. And so they were always just super supportive. Like from the time I, my dad always tells the story. At like two years old, I told him that I was going to grow up and I was going to live in Hollywood, which is like what two year old like knows. Like from <laughs> like I was was living in Snellville, Georgia. Like knew that that was what they wanted to do with their life. Like my parents didn't have anything to do with the business, and so it just always kind of helped me nurture that side of myself. Like I was in doing plays when I was like five years old and stuff, and so I just always loved that. But if, if that's what they want to do, absolutely, like whatever they want. But yeah, what I mean, was I your that, no, I was going to say, what, what, 
No, no, no. What's your, what was your first audition? What was your first job? And how many auditions did it take you before you actually landed a job? Because Brighton got his first audition. So everybody I hates did. Brighton. I you know? did too. <laughs> <laughs> she My first real audition, yeah. Well, I got started. I, I sent in a tape. I was in college and I sent in a tape to um, to MTV. <laughs> I loved the show, The Newlyweds with Jessica Simpson. And yeah. I like was online. Chicken at the Sea. Chicken at <laughs> the Sea. I I, Rachel, I, I love that show. It was so good. Like my mom and I watched it together. We loved watching it. And I sent in an audition tape to MTV. They had like a casting call of like, do you want to make it in Hollywood? Um, mm -hmm. Send in a tape. And so I, I sent in a tape. I ended up like I was sitting in one of my college classes. And I got a call from a New York phone number. And I was like, who's calling me from New York? And so I, I ended up like I had a message. They were like, this is MTV. We went, we went, we pushed your audition tape to the next round. And I didn't, I didn't even tell anyone that I sent in this tape. I had set up a camera and I did this tape all by myself. And I was like thinking that no one would ever watch it. Long story short, I ended up like getting on the show. It was called The Assistant. It was on MTV. It was to be Andy Dick's assistant. I ended up winning the show and I won a car. I won a job at MTV. I moved to LA. And then from that, I started modeling. And then when I, I got an acting manager, and she sent me on a, an audition for Entourage, and it was my first audition, and I ended up booking it. But I will say that Entourage was very nice to a lot of girls in L.A., because, especially if you were new, because they were always looking for, like, kind of newer girls that hadn't been mm -hmm. here before. And so and I actually worked on that job with Kelly Kruger, who is from Young and the Restless. So she we, oh, that was my first job. Yeah. And they, they gave me my SAG card, so... That was, that's my story. That's how I got in the business. <laughs> I've never heard it in the beginning. I never knew that. Brighton, yeah. Did you did you you got your SAG card Brighton from doing uh, Family Matters? Yeah, I've, I uh, I got it. It's thirty years uh, this year that I've had my SAG card. I got it uh, in wow. uh, when I was three and a half. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. Because my first my first audition was for a Disney commercial when I was two and a half. My parents took oh, me on the wow. wrong day, and and uh, but the producer was there, and I talked to him, and they canceled the audition and gave it to me. And then a year later it was first audi audition for a TV show, which was Family Matters. That's and, crazy. Yeah, that's so you know, cool. Even, now what's even crazy is that Brighton started on Family Matters when he was three, and because he couldn't read the scripts properly, what his parents would do, he would sit down and he would memorize with their help the entire script. Mm -hmm. He learned That's everybody's you have such dialogue. a good memory. Yeah, right. You're doing it. Yeah, I would have to know it because I didn't. I had to know when to speak, so I had to know after this person says this, and this person's going to say that, and then it's my turn to say this. So I would learn yeah. everyone's lines. That's so he'd sit at the table read, and he would know everybody's stuff. I thought he was like this child prodigy genius. Yeah, and my parents little do they know. Me, my parents used to have to tell me once I got past a certain age. Don't correct people on their lines. Because <laughs> everyone, every, anyone would go up on their lines, I would know it. I'd, I'd What's crazy them. is that, like, everyone that anyone that's worked with Brighton knows that he has, like, a crazy memory. And so, like, right. he just walks in and he, like, knows, he still knows everyone else's lines probably better than we know yeah. ours. <laughs> well, the most infuriating thing about oh. Brighton is we'd all go to set with our scripts in his hand, our hands, and, and he would turn up without a script. And then we'd be sitting there like looking for a line and like he'd yell out, the line. he'd say, oh, it's such and such. And Crystal would give him the filthiest looks. <laughs> and, and after a while, it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's insane. It's, it's, it's insane. And it's yeah. intimidating when you do scenes with him because you know that he knows his dialogue better than you know your own dialogue. So you <laughs> kind of get to this moment in the scene, you're like, oh, please don't correct me. Please don't look. He's looking at me like I don't know what I'm meant to say yet. <laughs> it actually helps because if anybody forgets, if I'm going to sing with you and you forget anything, I'll know what you were supposed to say so that we can, you know, keep making yeah. the scene. Like, it helps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, cra it's crazy how, you know, this has like served you so well, but it's the way he's wired yeah. too. Like he's wired like that. So, yeah. uh, so Abby, <laughs> it's what was that? Abby needs to wear that hat. You know, Abby has different style than me, but I do. I, it is fun. It is fun to dress like Abby because she wears a lot of pink, and it's a lot. It's different than my style, but in a good way, you know. I want to see Abby's casual movie. style. I've never seen Abby Abby casual. 
ever. I tried to do Abby casual during COVID uh, when we first came back from the show. And like, <laughs> no, Abby's still not casual. I was like, all right, all right, whatever works. <laughs> Did you, so you had, so everybody doesn't know that. So what happened after you guys went back from COVID? Well, like a couple of weeks back, you guys had to bring your own clothes and dress yourselves or do your own hair and makeup. So there's a lot of people saying, who's doing the hair and makeup at the moment? And I'm like, oh. well, they, you know, now they're doing our hair and makeup. They, we're, I'm so sorry. Hold on one second. That's, that's okay. No. Is that the man? Let me let me see the man. It's just it. No, where's he going? I think I think he's gonna take her into the store really quick to go uh, try to shop around. Maybe go look at some cowboy hats. But uh, <laughs> Sophie is very strong-willed. One of the great things about Sophie is that she is very smart, but she also has her own. She's a lot like me. She's very strong-willed. So she um she doesn't take no for an answer. So. <laughs> Okay. Well, you, you know, know we, if you want to be an actress, it's a big, big, big thing to have. You know, you'll learn true. that no, yeah. That's true. But now they were, they were keeping, they've kept us very safe at work. And so they have gone through like all the safety precautions. Like when we first went back to work, we were bringing our own clothes and stuff. And I actually um, ended up having just, I had borrowed some of Abby's clothes for maybe some <laughs> events. So I ended up working out perfectly because <laughs> they were anyway. dry clean and I had them anyway. So I could. I so could unfortunately you had to give them back or you still managed to fool them out of the whole thing and you left with them again. Because everybody in some way is liberated some clothes from why not. It, yeah, it's just, it goes. I think they're still borrowed. Let me just say that. I think what Michelle did. I think Michelle <laughs> took all of Hillary's clothes and now she, uh, she got yeah. to get them back. Yeah. And this is a great thing. They they should they're thanking us now at this point because they're like, oh great, it's still right. works, it's still working in, in your closet. So uh it's great. But um That's... no, it's it's been so good to be back to work. I feel like it's given everyone just like such a I think a morale boost. And you know, it's just nice to see everybody. We're all such a family. To yeah. be away from everyone for like five or six months months is like it's crazy. It was depressing, so it's good to be back. So I've got a lot of people with questions and a lot of the questions that have been asked are what have you been doing in your in your time off from COVID and during quarantine and everything? People want to know what, what's Melissa been doing. So everyone knows you moved to Nashville, a lot of questions like Shelly uh, Turner <laughs> on Instagram is asking, you know, what made you move to Nashville? She knows so many people moving there. Then we have a lot of questions about uh, Tracy lives there. This is from Donna Bendit. Also on Instagram, she's saying, you know, will you live so, in castmate Tracy Bregman? Tracy, Tracy lives close. So let me just, well, I'll just talk about the whole Nashville thing. So we still live in LA. Oh wait, there, no, it gets reconnected. We still live in LA. We still, we are building a house in Nashville. We're trying to figure everything out. You know, it's weird. I feel like everyone kind of reevaluated their lives during COVID, which right. we did. We, we, all of our family, my parents live in Maine, Justin's family, um, was living in Louisiana and they moved to Nashville. So we kind of felt like during COVID we were on an Island. Like we were all by ourselves, ourselves. Like right. we were literally like, we have no family here. There's no one that we can see. Like we were, we felt like it was just so depressing because as great as that time was together, just the four of us and like having that time as a family, we just felt, we were like, you know, FaceTiming our friends who had family around. We were, you know, right. that were able to go to see their parents. And we were kind of like, is this like, what do we want out of life? And we were like, you know what? We still love LA. We're, you know, thank God for work. Like I'm still in LA for work and it's awesome. But we decided we just bought five acres of land in Nashville and like outside of Nashville way in the country. And we were like, yeah, like we it had a big Creek on it and like fresh air and there's no, Oh, you're like, so lucky. Yeah. There's so like lucky. not a lot of like, you just feel like there's no one around. You feel very safe. And we were kind of like, you know what, let's just see what happens with the land. We'll just see what we, we'll kind of just figure it out. Like, we don't want to make any like rash decisions. Like right. you know, we, we bought the land and we're just kind of trying to figure everything out. Um, You know, honestly, like with COVID, like being in a big city, it's hard because the, everything is kind of shut down and there's not a lot going right. on. And, and so we just wanted the fresh air and kind of just, I just wanted to see what life would look like to have family close by too. So Justin's mom bought a place here. Justin's brother bought a place here. And so we'll see what, what happens and kind of how it all unfolds. But I've um, been spending a lot of time in Nashville and we love it here. And I, I grew up in Georgia, like I said, and Justin grew up in Louisiana. So we have Southern roots. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, but obviously still live in LA. So just trying to figure everything out. But 
you know, you just kind of the fresh air and like getting dirty and like just being able to run in a big creek. Like that's how I grew up. And so, you know, just kind of <laughs> see what we want for our girls. But so far, I'm still on the show. It's still still live in LA. Everything's still good. Knock on wood. I'll knock on my head. Uh, <laughs> but um, but yes, I, I think it's it's been great. It's been great for our family. That's kept us busy. You know, just spending a lot of time together. Um, homeschooling when I luckily it's just preschool so that has has its challenges but but um you know what have you guys been doing you've been doing like a big app which is so cool yeah. you guys have been yeah. way busier than me yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it feels like we never stop it yeah, yeah. I, I you know what's interesting though about like the whole COVID thing is that as you say like a lot of families have spent a lot of time together you know and it makes a lot of people kind of reassess their priorities and their family time, which is great. But then at the same time, you start to realize that without that family support, like you're saying, like you're here with the kids and your mom and that your dad were in Maine and uh, you, you have Justin with his parents in Louisiana, that you lose that kind of, that connectivity. So now you have that back. So it's good for the girls. I mean, it's, it's, it's great yeah. to keep the family together like that. Well, there was like so many times like during COVID, like, especially like gosh, in like mid April or like May when it was like, are we ever going to be able to leave our house again? Right. Um, like that we were like, right. could we just get in a car and like safely get to like a family member to just be able to right. have like, to just get a hug from somebody, you know, to right. just get like a, just a hug or like a, you know, just someone to talk to that wasn't like the immediate, the four of us. Or just to yeah. like have the girls like just say hi to and it was like it would take us a week to get to my parents it would take us like in a car it would take us a, a week to get to a, another fa another family member and we were like that's really far like that's a really but you drove time. did you drive from la no, well we ended up driving to nashville yeah but but yeah. not but that but during this time but like that was like well actually if i'm being completely honest, the girls and i flew justin drove but <laughs> <laughs> And I said, you're married to like this incredible guy. It's like yeah, two toddlers in a car for four days would be challenging. But um, and I will say, I'm very impressed with the airline because they were so safe. There's like no one on a flight right now, and on any flight that I've taken, so it's been really great. But um, right. yes, okay, here. Sorry, we're um, but it, so it, you know, Justin drove, and but just to be able to like before all of before it felt safe to even do that because you know in the middle of COVID, like there was no way I was gonna get on an airplane when it was yeah. like in the you know in the when you you know in, in the, the beginning, beginning of it. Yeah, no one knows what it is. Everyone's talking yeah. about it you know, in this yeah. this apocalyptic way. Yeah. Yes. So. So. so it's but the kids now I, like I grew up in Sydney, but I grew up just out of the city a little bit on a bay. And I used to sail and I used to like, explore in the, yeah. in the bush and stuff. And that's one thing I miss that my kids don't have as much in LA. You know, you can go hiking, but it's kind of like a desert thing. And I see the pictures of you and your little girls playing in the river, like and that yeah. happens, now it's out of the back of the place. I'm like, I I, I message your send of a thing saying, oh my god, I missed that. I wish my kids had that. Well, you know what it was too is like we had we loved our house the in our la but you know when you look in the backyard there was like apartments in the, our backyard yeah. we had a beautiful yard and it was like gosh like just to be able to like run and like get in a creek and like just get dirty and like you know mm. it, it just i i love la i've lived there for 15 years so it definitely is home but there was something about like just being with nature and you know whatever wherever yeah. that takes us in the future like we'll see um i definitely like we're def we're building a house, so we'll see what happens with that house. Whether or not it like ends up being something that's like we go to once or twice a year, or whatever happens right. with it, we'll figure that out. Right. But you know, it's just like it's just it's nice to be able to like if anything like this happened again, to be like we're going to fresh air and we're gonna like yeah. you know just be away from everybody and feel like super safe and like just like I don't know. Yeah. I guess because like our generations never dealt with anything like this before. Like we've never right. been like dealt with like a pandemic in this way. Like it's like, it's been really eye opening and like just figuring out like reevaluating and figuring out what's important. And I think we just were like, what's best for our kids. And yeah. you know, we're, we're still in the midst of figuring that out, but like we want the option of like, if we figure out that that's like being in the country, then. It's you fantastic. Know, we'll get, Did you find it? Did we'll you get find a, a church there? Chicken. <laughs> Did we get find a, a church chicken. there? 
Yeah, in, in, in Nashville, because uh, I know we have a lot of friends here. I think that was another reason why I feel like 70% of our friend group in the past two years has either moved to Dallas or Nashville. Right. And so, yeah, so we were like, gosh, like what in his, when his brother and mom said that they were moving to Nashville, we're like, okay, well, we do have a lot of friends there. So we haven't gotten connected to a church just yet, but we have a lot of friends that go to different churches that we want to try. You know, I haven't opened that can of worms yet with like going to church in person yet which they're doing here and if it's safe like great i i just want to i don't know i just feel a little bit like with crowds and so i don't know if i want to do that yet but uh <laughs> to each their own no judgment no judgment no but, not at all yeah not at all. <laughs> but, um, hey i've got so, a question for you from karen outlaw that is yeah. awesome. If that's her real last name, that. Karen. Yes. It's awesome. I call my in-laws the outlaws. You know, like my mother-in-law, <laughs> the outlaws are coming over. So. Uh, her question, what has been your favorite storyline to act in as Abby Newman? And also, what was it like on your first day? She came in and filled M. Ryan's shoes. I did, yeah. And, and my, well, my first day I was scared because I had never done – well, I was walking on a set where we had just, you guys had just celebrated your 40th anniversary, which was like crazy. And I grew up watching the show with my mom. So my one of my first scenes was with Eric Braden. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And they didn't I didn't know that they didn't say action on set of a soap opera. That's so funny. I was the same way. I'm waiting to say action. They just count down. like standing there going. They were like, five, four, three, two. And I was like. <laughs> uh, waiting for the action and like no one said it but um so everyone kind of looked at me like what in the world um and so yes, baby. oh and so we um so we that was nerve-wracking but everyone was so nice and was like such a dream come true i have to say that my favorite storyline i've been pushing this story for seven years since i've been on the show brian you already know what i'm gonna say i do because <laughs> i've wanted the same thing <laughs> <laughs> but, um, they never, they never yes. do An it. Abby Devon storyline. We did go out on one date. We were both heartbroken, so it didn't go over well. So yeah, well, that's when you threw out. the money. That's when you threw the money off the top of the uh, rooftop deck. Was it right around that time? But even before that, we had we had a great. We had two, yeah. one or two great dates, even though I we were in love with other people. I know, but okay, and I, you know. There was always the the door was open for Kane and Abby, but you know, I don't know. I don't know if Abby would do that to Lily. That was the only question mark for me because Lily is like Abby is one of her best friends. So I've always, right. you know, thrown that out there. But didn't you do something? Didn't you get, you get, you get a stitch? And stitch was with uh, with your mom. mom. Wow. That's true. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so um, I really wait, 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 wait. That's just. You know, it's crazy. Like we talked about this before with, uh, with I think Tracy uh, Bregman when she was on, and we were talking about how there's these standard and practices that take place in intimate love scenes in daytime, where you can't be in this position or can't do this, can't do that. But at the same time, you can both sleep with the same guy that your mother and you were sleeping with, and it's like, okay. And what's really sad is that. Stitch really only married Abby because he felt bad for her. He really was in love with <laughs> Ashley. So he just kind of felt bad because Abby was like so into him that that's the, really the only reason why they ended up getting together, which is pretty sad. But, you know, what, what are you going to do? Abby but, and the um, business. Thanks. That's crazy. We both yeah. done that with our parents. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. Um, right now, I love working with Michelle Stafford, so I would say that that's probably one of my favorite storylines that I've gotten to play is getting to go head to head with her because she's like a powerhouse. Like, yeah, she oh is. my she's gosh, great. like she's insanely good. Like, I mean, everyone on our show is good, but I feel like she like adds some sort of like crazy element to like rivalry, and like you never know where she's gonna take it. So you're con she just makes you better. Like she like makes mm -hmm. you step up your game because you know that she's gonna be like incredible and, and like right. you never yeah and you like never really know like what you're gonna do because you're just playing off of her and she like doesn't ever do it the same because she mm -hmm. i don't know she's she's just i've loved working with her and I, I love her as a person like i've really gotten to know her pretty well and i think she's just so awesome so that's been one of my favorite storylines to play um you know 
everything is fine. Like, I just love getting to work as an actor. So I'm like, if you write it, I will play it and I will love it and I will like do the best that I can. But you know, sometimes it's just been, it's really fun to, to get to, I think the thing that's been different about working with Michelle too, is like something that Abby has never really done before. Right. So it's been cool. Yeah. I remember I had a scene with, with Michelle uh, Stafford, like towards the end, but before I, before I, uh, and I, I was so excited because I'd always wanted to have a storyline and work with her. And I finally had these really good scenes and I was so excited about it. And, and she and I talked about it and I was like, let's see where this goes. So I, I totally dig what you're saying there. So yeah, let me ask this, out, out, outside no, of no, YNR. No, no, I want to know outside YNR. So I know that you've got to get to the airport soon because you're, you're flying back tonight. So people keep asking when you're coming back. You're flying back yeah. tonight to come back to work, right? Tonight. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I want to ask you, outside of week. YNR, Oh, you, you brought you're in this week, right? Yeah, I am. Yep. So you guys, yeah. do, you guys do you guys have scenes together this week or? Unfortunately not. No, I know. Unfortunately not. Hey, you know, I'm going to write it. I'm going to send it to Josh. I'll submit some things, some rewrites, and maybe we'll we see what happens. We have to just keep pushing. We have to keep trying every <laughs> One of these days, it's going to work. I don't know, like, I don't know how, but it's going to work. Like, I, I always say there's, like, a backstory that, that we're just not telling everyone. I always, right. like, and, and even Brittany was like, I saw that in that scene when you did that hand graze. I was like, yep. <laughs> You know, my experience from, from, from talking to head writers is if you suggest that they want to do it, so you have to tell them not to do it, and then they'll do it. You say, the worst That's thing true. you could ever do. Don't ever do this. It'd be horrible. <laughs> Put, uh, I refuse, say, okay. I refuse to play it. I will not. Yeah, I, will I will not never do that. James. It's, yeah, it's like, oh. You know, or you say who you want to work with, and you mention everybody but Brighton, and they'll go, let's put it with Brighton. That's what it is, because I think every interview, they're like, who would you like to work more with? I'm like, Brian James. I'm like a crazy stalker. Uh. Well, there's so much potential there, too. I mean, when you look at the backstory of, of the money and, and Victor yeah, and, and Neil not, and then. It's not just me, because I've had a conversation with Em about this. And I was like, I was pushing for this back in the day, like back before you, like, ever came on oh, yeah, the show. She's like, Brian and I were pushing for this. I was like, okay, yeah, cool. It's not yeah. just me. Yeah. They, they almost went that direction. They were going to do something right around the time I was finding out who my uh, I was Catherine's grandson. They were going to do something with me and uh, and uh, M, and then oh, they really? stop. I don't know why they keep stopping. Yeah, we're just going to say we don't want to do it, and then we'll see what happens. That's what you have to do. <laughs> just just say that's the last thing I want to do is work together, and they'll go, well, "Let's do it." <laughs> yes, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so, are you, are you gonna be you gonna be flying back and forth now while you're in Nashville? I mean, how Steve Burton did that while he was there, and Tracy does it while she's there. So now you've yeah. joined the. Uh... I did temporarily, so I think this is like I think this weekend will be um, one of the last times for a while, and then um, I think that Justin and the girls because it's a, it's a bit safer now in LA. Um, you know, I think the numbers have gone down. So um, according to what I've read, so we'll see. Um, so I think that, I think it'll be me being more in LA and um, maybe just coming out here to supervise every now and then, you know? Well, so how are you going to be away from the girls? I mean, how, how, how are you going to be with no, that? I mean, so the girls are just kind of in preschool. So now that, okay. now that the, now that the numbers are down, they can, and you know, now that we, you know, things are starting to open up again and being able to safely. Well, it is, it is in Tennessee, to... California still got its own agenda. I think I'm not, I'm not until the election, I think it's going to be here and there. Then after the election, anything may go one way or the other, but you know. We'll have to wait and see what happens. I think right now yeah. we're just in the, in the process of being like, we'll see what happens. I know that I'm going to be in LA now for the next little bit. And I think they're going to come to me. So, you know. That, that's, that's the great, great thing about about preschool is that we can just like do it all from home. We can call in. We can we can oh. make up our own rules right now. You know. Yeah, it's like being a grown up that actually makes decisions. Because you know, as an actor, you spend your entire life people telling you where to go, what to say, what to do, what time to be there, where to move. And all of a sudden, you're like, I get to make my own decisions. I get to do what I want to do, and it's it's pretty empowering. So Justin's I'm not good doing at being a grow up, grown up right now. You're not. So. Uh, you know, I'm working on it. We'll see. I like being a big kid, but I'm working on being a grown up. <laughs> you're, the, you're the youngest big kid I've ever met. Like, I remember when I heard of, I, I, not talking about ages, but I've already mentioned your age, but I, I heard of your age was. I was like, no, 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 no. That doesn't make any sense. She's like 20 because I you have such, 
a young spirit about you. Thank you have you. such Thank a young you. spirit. I was in a, I, had, I came here this weekend because Olivia had a follow up appointment for her arm. And so I went, I had to go see that we had to go to the specialist. And so I was in this room. It was me and Olivia and a bunch of like other children around her age that had just gotten like broken limbs and stuff yeah. at this orthopedic surgeon. And I'm like, I literally, I kid you not, it's me. And the parents were all sitting in the back. I had all these kids around me and we're like singing like all of these Paw Patrol songs. Like, because some kids have like Paw Patrol on their cast and stuff. And I was like, this pretty much sums it up. I am like an overgrown toddler <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is still trying to figure out life, but we're, I'm having a good time doing it. So. And, and, and Justin's doing real estate. Is what, what's Justin doing about himself out there? He is, he's doing real estate in um, California, but um, he kind of kind of was doing that. But he's also he's also doing a movie. He's about to go film a movie, which is super. I was going to cool. say, he had a Nick, did and he have a Netflix movie that came out? He did. My... He's had a movie on Amazon that came out um, called Night right. and Day. Um, he's about to go film a movie in Colorado, which is super cool. Fantastic. Um, so, which my parents are going to come out with the girls and stuff. So that's, that's why fantastic. The girls will be with me. And um, so he's going to do a movie. He's doing music. He's write, actually writing some songs for the movie that he's about to go do. He's a very talented wow. musician. So yeah. he's got a lot going on. Well, congratulations. You know? That's great. Yeah. So well. yeah. He's, he's excited about it. This, I'm, I'm excited for him. because he's, he's just like a, one of the most talented guys I've ever met or known. So he has a lot going on with that. And yeah, so it's, yeah. it's a lot of fun stuff happening in the, in the guests and household. <laughs> What's the movie called again on Amazon? So, so people, people can watch the movie. Night and today. Night, night and day. And night and today. Yep. And, I, and I'll like, I'll post about night it. I think I already have it. I'll, I'll post again about it. Cause he's so good. In it. And it's actually like, it's weird because it's about like a um, kind of a, a a bomb or something goes off in LA. I do know. I do know. Like, well, you know, you know, I've seen it a couple of times. He's so good at it. But I don't, I don't know. I was like, it's not post apocalyptic. Wait, wait, have you it's seen about, the, like, Melissa? Have you seen? The I movie? have. I've seen it twice. I have. Did you watch it, or you were just oh. in the room when it was playing? I, no, I watched it. I went to a screening of it <laughs> right. at iPic, and it was so good. And I've seen it on Amazon. And it's really good, but I was, you know, it, I'm, it's not post-apocalyptic because it's like a bomb that goes off in LA. And so mm. they're stuck. It's like, an, I, I, I don't want, it's like atomic bomb. I don't know. I'm so bad at this. But I just know that they're stuck in this apartment and they can't go outside because of all of the radiation. Okay. So it's like so the that's, COVID that's, story with radiation. Pretty much. That's why when we were, because we had just had, he had had the screening for the movie. And then like a couple weeks later, COVID happened. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> we're stuck in here. We can't leave. Everyone's that's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, that's so great. It's very timely, and I, you know, but he's very good in it. His co-star is really good. Jessica, what's Jessica's last name? Just Rabbit. Just I don't know. Jessica. Her, he, he Jessica, said her Jessica Instagram. Rabbit. I think he said yeah. <laughs> he's, he he called he's calling her her in, his her Instagram name, which is Jessica Renrus. Just Ren Renrus. Wow, but uh, she's amazing in it. She's very <laughs> She's oh my god! Right now, I'm being like, "Oh my god!" But, uh, it's a very good movie. You guys should all go watch it and keep watching. Oh my god! It. So things are getting things are getting really good on Young and Restless, and I'm I'm very excited. But yeah, well, you want to get in your so car seat? <laughs> I'm like, do you want to get? Everyone's so seat? happy to have you back. Everyone's so happy to have all you guys back, and everyone's missed you guys, and they're happy to have all the new stuff. I want to ask you real quick: Live and Soap, the clothing line. Are you guys still doing that? We are have some stuff coming up, so be, stay tuned. You know, I there's just been a lot going on, and I honestly like I'm like I said I'm an overgrown kid trying to figure out life. So we um we have some ideas for for some things that we want to do with that. So it's not done. I just feel right. like we were got a bit overwhelmed with it because yeah, it's a lot of work. Amongst, well, yeah, we we were trying to get into some real estate stuff in LA, which is why Justin had gotten his real estate license. So we were kind of during the midst of that selling a house and buying a new house and flipping stuff and it's just a lot of stuff going on so right. once we're kind of now now that covid's over and we can kind of get our we have kind of we know what's going to happen with with stuff we want to get definitely do that again so but thank you for right. asking about it because you everyone yeah. was so great with that and supported it so which was awesome and i i have a new charity that i want to support so um what, what, what's the charity called well, I want it. It's called uh, Our Rescue, and so um, basically to end human trafficking. So, 
It's great. There's all of that stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on in this world. There's a lot of stuff. Dude. I don't and think people realize that human trafficking was as bad as it was. I mean, you honestly, it was the other day I was reading, they found uh, a little girl. Uh, where, I can't remember what state it was in. There was a guy trying to sell her for $2,500 at the gas station. Jesus. I'm like, how? And, and I thought, how does that happen? Then you start doing the research into it and you realize in this country alone, there are thousands and tens of thousands of children every year sold on human trafficking. To other Americans, which is my yeah. problem to me. It's yeah. insane. And like, I, you know, it happens way more than you, I mean, I, I, happening once is way too many times, but unfortunately right. it's something that's actually happening a lot. And um, we just need to, we need to end it. There's a lot of, you know, there's just a lot of scary stuff going on in this world. So anything yeah, that, absolutely. I don't know. I've heard, I heard a story right. recently. Everyone just watch your kids at the park. Like, please, like. And just I, I, I never took my eyes off the kids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's crazy, but I don't know. And that's a hard thing too, because I remember like growing up, and you know, at eight years old, nine years old, you'd get on your BMX bike, you'd go out, you'd ride around, you wouldn't come back, and the sun went down. Absolutely, and I, I would. I wouldn't let my kids out of my sight at eight years old. Even now, my oh, yeah. so, fourth, fourteen. If I didn't know where he was, I'd have a problem with it. Yeah. You know, my yeah, parents like, would be like, "Oh, he's out somewhere." It's crazy, like because I was saying, like we we I grew up in a neighborhood in outside of Atlanta. And we would all be at each other's house. We'd play outside until it got dark and then we would go in. Yeah, people knew where we were, but you know, it was right. like pretty, it was just different times. Now it's like, you just, you just gotta be so careful. And even as a woman or, a, or really, I mean, I don't wanna just say woman, just as anyone, you just need to be careful of your surroundings all the time. Right. Because right. I, I read that there's this a face, an Instagram thing going around about this woman who was at a gas station who like, this guy, it's just, it's just so many scary stuff. I don't, I don't even want to get into all of it because it just makes me want to cry. But, <laughs> yeah. but everyone, be yeah. careful out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Hey, listen, I know you, you got to get, you get your family back oh, together can and, we and get do ready this for the airport. Again, though? Like, can I invite would myself back on this? I would I love to. I love talking to you guys, and I love seeing your faces, and this is awesome. Thank you for having me. Would, would love to. Let, let's do it again, like a month or so, because there's so much yeah. more stuff to catch up on. We'd love to. We'd love to. Can we see I Justin before we go? So we can see. Yeah, Justin. You we're about to hang up, and everyone wants to say hi. Can you, oh wait, can you we're, see? Oh wait. Hey, 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 buddy. Hi. Good to see you, pal. <laughs> well, he's a oh, great he guy. Hi. He, he said, he said yeah. hi. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you guys have a beautiful family. I'm so happy you guys are well and you're safe and you're healthy and all that good stuff. And, and we'd love to talk to you again and have a safe flight and, and miss you. When, this all, I just when all this craziness is over, we'll catch up. I'm going to hug you all. When all of this is over, I'm giving you all hugs. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to, like, just come grab you. But um, I love you both, and thank you for having me. And any time, and congratulations, because this app is awesome. Like, I'm so thank excited you. for you guys. Big thank, things to thank come, you, for thank sure. Thank you, sweetheart, very much. Bye, yeah. guys. Bye. Love you guys. Take care. Yes, we'll love you. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. 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 Yo.